of incredible infrastructure, standard facilities, and beautiful amenities. Our estates at Adron Homes come affordable with great discounts and flexible payment plans. No stress, no hassles. The amount of food that would have been produced there and pushed into the market. And by the way, what we saw on TV were imported food. We saw apples. <laughs> That's all grown in Nigeria. It was imported. <laughs> so you may see a lot of that. It doesn't mean that it's from the farms. But coming back to the important point here now, uh, there are two, two things to look at here now. First, um, and perhaps this should be of interest to government. You know, our, we, I've always talked about strategic grain reserve. I don't know what is happening to that. You know, that could have been something that could have, while we're tackling security, could have been like a buffer for us at a time like this. Then the other thing of interest is the fact that, you see, the reason this is to continue to go be expensive is that along the value uh, chain. chain, we have failed to set up, don't talk about um, location or localization of industries. Let me use the Bainway Basin, for instance, where, where you get cashew nuts and all that. Have we thought, for instance, about setting up factories have the complete chain in around Bainway there, both for packaging, you know, logistics, the uh, processing of the oranges, you know, before, instead of taking them from, because from the farm, before it gets to Lagos, they've lost so almost 80%. There's so much spoilage. You know, almost 80% of and it. And the farmers don't want to lose out. They don't. Because people don't want to lose out. So, so all of that that has been lost is going to come onto... An orange costing, did you say uh, 50 naira or something uh, yeah. like that? Uh, up you to know, 100, that's uh, the last time he bought. But you see, what makes it even more expensive? Usually, if it comes out duly, it might be cheap because they just want to dispose of it. But now, what are you disposing of? There's not enough, which is why the prices are escalating. And these people, they cannot, there's no method of, no conscious effort at preservation or taking industries close to these bees, uh, these uh, sources, so that we can store them, you know, ready for, I mean, are, company... are, are, we, are we stuck then? Are we, are we stuck in this vicious cycle that you were speaking about? Because um, what Nigerians want and need, and it is known by the authorities, is uh, an immediate solution to this. But people are going to start talking about medium term solutions, a long-term solution. We can discuss all of that. Know, but what can possibly be done in the interim uh, such that, um, look, I have, you know, pity parents who send their kids out to school. Uh, in our day, you were probably a very good, lucky child if you got uh, maybe two or three pence to take to school. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Nowadays, people, apart from uniform and all of that, now have to maybe find 100 naira is not going to get anywhere, but no. probably that's what they take. <laughs> but Mr. George, good morning to you, sir. Thank you for holding on. Good morning to you and the guests, Uncle Yuri. Good morning. Uncle Yuri, thank you very much for bringing up this topic this morning. I had been noting it that you will bring it up. Now, there is a great debate going on in the society, and that debate is about the price of fuel. The Angote factory has started producing. The, the factory the, in um, Portacourt is already prepared to also start producing. Uncle Yeri, I can tell you the reason for this uh, sudden surge of food prices is the removal of fuel subsidy. The greatest palliative that the president can give Nigerians that can effectively replace all these cash transfers and all the rest is to subsidize the fuel price in a way. Now that we have refineries producing in Nigeria, I know that there was this 300,000 or 400,000 arrests per day that was. Reduced price, if not free. And then the, 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 the refineries should sell to the marketers in Naira. 
Dangote is already registering marketers now. The debate is going on. What are we going? At what price are we going to sell it? What, what, what uh, currency are we going to use for the purchase? How much is Dangote going to be listening? They should tell Mr. President that the greatest palliative we can give Nigerians is in this fair price, and the opportunity for it has just come. If the fair price is reduced to say about half of what we are buying it now, you will see that the price of food items would come down because all of them, they always say it is the transportation to bring the food from the remote areas that brings up the prices. If the price, if the, the fuel is reduced, take it from me, there will be a relief. Indeed. Thank well, you. thank you very much, uh, Mr. George, for that contribution. I was going to come to you. Your commentary on that, because we've talked about wastage is also contributing to the soaring uh, price of foods and, uh, and, and all of that. Yes. Um, what I want to say is uh, uh, we need industries, more cottage industries in Nigeria. Um, we need, uh, I think uh, the president is looking at, at uh, uh, Bringing in small businesses, which, which uh, I was I was I was in a meeting uh, at uh, VI uh, where LCCI um, um, had uh, the chairman the of Chamber Fis of Commerce and yes, Industry. Yes, yes, where he had um, they had the the chairman of uh, um, the uh, fiscal reforms and tax reforms uh, and uh, the budget uh, chairman. So. Uh, what, 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 what I got from that is that about a hundred billion is being allocated for small businesses to rise. So, if what I'm trying to say is that if we have um, industries that small, small industries that can process foods, I think we are in the right direction. Yes, yes, but. Uh, important as it is, these are not fresh ideas. Commentators have been making this point. There's no shortage of expertise saying the kind of thing that you've been saying. But, uh, 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 Dr. Victor, hi. It hasn't gotten us anywhere. And there are, there are some people, call them conspiracy theorists, who are saying, who is worrying about the, the livelihood of uh, bad guys? <laughs> bad guys. Uh, who is worrying about the <laughs> livelihood okay. of bad guys? But as I said, it's important to put it in the name. Look, I mean, uh, 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 conspiracy theorists are the people who are theorizing like this. But coming here, as I was making the point, your very good self, himself, and other experts have been telling us that this is the way to go. These cottage industries begin to strengthen the chains, the you know, value chain. Uh, and we're talking about farming here. Uh, there's poultry. There's poultry. Those ones are crying. These ones are saying it's impossible. Feeds. They can't afford feed anymore. Even fertilizer. The cost of fertilizer for, uh, uh, for farming is, is gone up the roof. Fisheries? Yeah. I don't know Fertilizer. where we are. So any way you look at it, when Mr. George called in and said, you know what, everybody is talking about this um, uh, fuel scarcity, and I mean, uh, that uh, the, removing the subsidy. What do you think of his idea? That if you could do a sort of a differential uh, pricing, Maybe subsidy could come in that sort of a way where I don't know if Nigerians will not abuse it again. My worry is this. You know, it's important to tackle this problem at the very root. And when I talk, when I'm, what I mean by the very root is um, if, if you remove all the uh, fuel... Uh, let, let me come back to you. Then, right. let, me, let me quickly take a break all so right. that I wouldn't need to uh, interrupt you. No, no. Uh, stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Day on Business Nigeria, we uncover the secrets of the financial world, breaking down intricate economic and financial matters. We analyze the stock market, shares, bonds, and the thrilling world of cryptocurrencies. We unveil and analyze complex policies of the CDN and other government parasitals as they affect your everyday life, keeping you a step ahead every time. Okay, okay, this is the middle of it. Facts matter. 
Our team dives deep to separate fact from popular opinion. We simplify complex government policies as it impacts your everyday life, helping you navigate the ever-changing financial landscape. Watch Business Nigeria every weekday at 2 p.m. Only on TVC News. First, with... Okay, welcome back. And uh, our guests are Dr. Victor Ohai, Africa Affairs Analyst, and uh, Mr. Solomon uh, Oyoniro. He's the CSO or CEO of uh, also a, a foods, uh, agro foods processing expert. Just when we were on break, we were saying that, look, we, we probably have to segment this our conversation properly because um, in, in places like Lagos and other you know, centers around the country, just drive around on a Saturday and look at all the event venues, uh, the, the you know, party venues. They're all fully booked. Uh, you see money changers in front with mint currency. You go in there, you find, you know, Sumptuous food. So people are beginning to, what, are there two Nigerias? Uh, if we, if we're talking about spiraling costs of food, <laughs> you know, uh, yet you see all of that. Is it really as serious a problem as we're trying to make out on this program? You were going to go into the matter that George, George's idea. Yes. Um, if you take away all the subsidies, of course you know that in Nigeria, uh, whatever goes up, how they come down, it's like, Having a domestic lion that has tasted blood, it will be difficult to get it to be as it were, to, as, you know, to go back to where it was. But that's not to say it cannot happen, because the force of demand and supply can truly, make, can truly force prices down. But there, there, there are more critical issues than the issue of, uh, what do you call it now, um, uh, bringing up, that is going to help, bringing down the prices of... Um, uh, what do you call it now, uh, or subsidizing fuel. But note, America mm -hmm. is deliberate and conscious about agriculture and food security. Yes. They are one country that subsidizes their farmers. And in Nigeria, we have to go a step further. Subsidizing in this case, I, okay, let me go to a step further before I come back to the issue of subsidy. A step further is protecting them by every means necessary. Because you see, a hungry people can translate to an angry people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the word food security can be double-edged, you know. It's not just about securing food, but also the state of security eh, based on uh, how the people feel. If they're not full... Mm. They can go. They can go to the streets because it gets to a point where because a hungry man can, can be an angry can man. be an angry man. Thank you very much. But there's this disparity, so, but, as I was just pointing. No, out. I'm coming to the, the issue you know, of the disparity. But, but, but before you continue, sir, I, yes. I, forgive me for interrupting you because yes. the program is interactive. No, it's fine. Uh, uh, Doctor Joat, I didn't get the name. Is calling in from Joss. Yes. Uh, yes, there you go, uh, Doctor Joat. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah. Good morning. Yes. Thank you for calling in. You're on air now. Go ahead, please. Yeah. All right. Um, this is a clear topic, insecurity and rising food prices. Well, now the truth is insecurity and food prices are interlinked because, because without security, nobody can even go to the farm, nobody can produce, nobody can have factories and what have you. But the point is this. What I think we need most is um, a reorientation of our youth. Our youth should know that farming is a viable business. Our youth should know that farming is a different thing to do. Because nowadays, once they say this guy is a farmer, you see people will even be, people will start looking down on you, and people will even think you're a poor person or you're a villager. Until our people start seeing very rich farmers in Nigeria, that is when the youth will feel, um, will feel happy to go into farming. And so the second thing is this. Without fertilizer, with high, with high cost of feed, without power, how can we produce and how can we even have manufacturing industry to, to curtail waste? I remember I schooled in Kaduna in, in a place called Ikara. Then we, have, uh, we, had, uh, we had a food processing plant in that local government. 
You could see all this and bringing their tomatoes and what have you. You send it off, and then there's this um, tomato process. They call it processing stuff. So you see, every farmer knows that once he produces, we get to sell all his farm produce. So you see, there's competition. That makes everybody to even want to um, farm more. But these days, you farm, you buy fertilizer at a very um, high price, high cost of transportation because of the um, removal of soil subsidy, and you go and, and almost 50, 70 percent of your produce get wasted before getting to Lagos. So this is our problem. The government knows this, but the government is just reluctant to do the right thing. Okay. Until we start doing the right thing, sir, mm -hmm. I'm afraid we can never, never have this thing right. Thank no. you. Thank you very much. Um, well, when you said there that the government knows it but is reluctant, I, I guess they would beg to differ that, look, um, we, we, uh, maybe the government is even overwhelmed. I, I don't know. But what Dr. Jewett was saying there reminded me, we, we go, this is why I said a lot of these ideas, we've been hearing about them uh, like ideas to get us up, out of the woods. Uh, we've been hearing about it for, for some time because this, he, he brought to mind uh, uh, President Obasanjo, at the time he was head of state, Obasanjo, uh, uh, Operation Feed the Nation. Mm. Remember? Yes. Uh, Operation Feed the Nation. Yes. And that's what Mr. Dr. Jewett was talking yeah. about, that look, uh, people need to, they, they need to just embrace farming and know that there's no way around it. Whatever you're doing, it might be an extra stream for you. Uh, even if it is not an extra stream for income, at least it can supplement what you're doing. But I interrupted you because of that call that came well, in. Well, a lot of things have come up since the call, but let's, you recall, you recall DIFRI? Yes, yes, DIFRI. Uh, during Babangida's time, mm -hmm. Department for Ru Roads, Ru uh, Food, Roads, and Rural Infrastructure. So you can see that sort of, they were intertwined yes. as well, because yes. good roads, of course, will lead to produce having easy passage and all. So... Government has to be deliberate. I was talking about the Americans. That's why and Dr. Joe had said that government yes. knows this, but um, I think, did he? He, he, he alleged that they're ignoring it. It's well, not, it can't be that they're ignoring it. No, no. You see, we have to get our priorities right. Oil has spoiled us, in, as a matter of fact. Agriculture will take more people off the street. Huh? If we had our, if we had, like we had different, like this agricultural extension But people have to program. be attracted to agriculture. No, that's, that's what that's I'm saying. That's the point that you was making. No, with agricultural extension programs, I recall I talked about this issue of the value chain and taking the industries to those places mm -hmm. where, you know, as soon as you're farming, there are off-takers, you, you know, you can't, you have the value chain at, close to that source of, uh, the source of production. You can process, you can package, and there's logistics, you can, you can transport these things. It makes it easier. So there's little waste, little or no wasting. Okay. We have to be deliberate about them. This country has been mapped. We know what comes from every local government area across the country. Government can be deliberate about this. But, but because Different. agriculture yes. is, by its very nature, it's, it's an ancient profession, perhaps as old as the so-called oldest profession in the world. Um, and nowadays, the use that Dr. Jewett was you know, uh, appealing to, um, they have alternative means. They, they don't want to wait for a, a cropping season. No, but we, we can be deliberate about this. The cyber, what, what, no, what the cryptocurrency yes. now, and all sorts of internet-based incomes, and people just don't want to get their hands Not dirty Not every anymore. young person is there. It's, You're right. It's easy to make a sweeping generalization. There are still many that are unemployed. How do you do this? Do we have, if you have farming settlements, you can, and we talk about even these extension services, if government can mm -hmm. go help them till the land, they have they cannot afford tractors. As but a the government, deliberate policy. Yes, as a know, deliberate you, policy. You, you, you go out you there, know, go you out do out, the heavy grunt for them. Exactly. And there are some state governments. I recall seeing a documentary, I don't know if it's propaganda like that, but documentary in, from somewhere, uh, Delta City. It may have been on your station or so. I saw it when Delta was doing things with your station, where they would go set up poultry for young people, train them. And you could see the testimonies that were coming from there. You could do the same with Pigri. You could do the same. I mean, there's animal husbandry. Concerted. There's so many. We have say? to be concerted about it and not give up. No, but know, that's the thing. We've, we've got to be deliberate about that's it. That's it. Farming can truly, truly be, I mean, that's something that can grow exponentially. Okay, I, I'm going to come to you, but let me bring on um, uh, 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 Dr. Yakub. Uh, 
Good morning to you. Thank you very much. You give me doctor today. Thank Calling from Dr. Emo. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning, Sujari. I mean, Yakub. Uh, uh, I don't have uh, much to say uh, to support uh, the opinion given by Mr. George. You know why? The reason is this. Sujari, hello, sir. I don't know, maybe you are hearing me. Sir. Yes, we can hear you. Hearing? We can hear you. Yeah, thank you very much. You see, if Mr. President can give us that, what Mr. George said earlier, Sujari, I bet you, every price of food in this country will drastically come down. Now, we were taught that when uh, Dangote Refinery started producing and then refining our petrol, every, the price of petrol on price will come down. But it, too, it looks like impossible. I don't know, I stand to be corrected. Because now that the, the, the refinery have started uh, producing now and then refining our petrol on price, I was thought that this will come down and then every price in market will follow suit. Another thing is this, Sibjali, another person mentioned it earlier, which is insecurity. That's another area that Mr. President needs to do something to it. Because even though, you, we, we, as somebody said that you should go to farm, if you even go to farm and then you make sure that everything put in place and then you protect, how do you, how will you show that you are not going to be attacked in the farm? That's another, another thing is the road network. Sibjali, I, I, I used to tell you this, sir. I know that you are from Ogo State. Just try one Sunday, sir. Travel from uh, uh, Abuja down to Abekuta, and then come back on Monday. Come and tell us what you face that. Because that road, and then later, I think later last year, uh, Ogusa government said that they are going to fix that part of the road, and then nothing has been happened there. Tell me, the people that are producing farm in the Nyama and all that crop in the Yewa side, how are they going to bring this thing to urban, urban city? It is impossible. Another thing is this. Do you know that when you are bringing crops from Ogu State and then from Okiogu State, Okiogu, rather, and then you get to Toge, even before you get to Toge, there are some, there are some other guys. We don't know who these guys are working for. You cannot carry this thing past unless you set to them. Yeah. Where this money is going All to. sorts of extortion. They will make sure that they stop, yeah. put, they stop your fed food. And then you. if you dare not pay them, they will deflect the tire. And then the crop will drop while there. We are, done, we, are done, we are tired of all this kind of thing. So, Mr. President, you look into petrol price. You should, should make sure that this is come down. Thank you and God bless you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yakub, for uh, calling in. There are all sorts of, uh, um, you know, encumbrances and distortions. Uh, he's speaking about you know, people setting up their own roadblocks uh, in the midst of all of this. And, well, Mr. Yakub there wanted to speak about what Mr. George had uh, spoken about earlier and what we do to ourselves, um, all sorts of illegalities. Uh, we're talking about fuel being as expensive as it is and uh, ideas of bring that down, it might sort some things out. There is a petrol station in, uh, along Agidigui Road, you know, a mm. uh, mobile petrol station, mm. uh, a mobile in Agidigui. If you buy fuel there, and you're going to pay with your card, they surcharge you 50 naira. Yes, a few stations mm -hmm. do that. Eh? A few stations do that. Now, that's illegal. That's illegal, but this is the kind of nonsense that is allowed because laws don't work. People can wake up and make their own laws. Mm -hmm. you add, they say to you up front, if you're paying with your card, that'll be 50 naira extra on top. We're talking about that. Uh, that's the mobile, mobile along our giving way. And um, they, I said, where did this order come from? He said, from a managing director. That's, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. So this lawlessness is contributing. We don't, uh, that person, the person who owes that petrol station, for instance, he's just taking care of himself, getting 50 naira extra every time you use your, 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 your debit, naira debit card. Uh, it goes to show you the lawlessness that goes on, and there must be the food version of it, I am sure. I am, I am sure. So uh, Yakub returned to the idea of, Find a way to subsidize. That, that word, one has to be careful about it because this administration has said subsidy is gone. <laughs> yeah. So well, we, we, they probably don't like the word subsidy being brought to bear. But uh, would you like to comment a bit more on the whole idea of fix the price of fuel to the ordinary people and a lot of our problems with escalating food prices will come down? You, do, is that an optimistic idea, or do you think there's something to it? Yes, we, it's, it's a good idea. Um, another point I want us to look at it is, uh, um, I mean, igniting, yes, igniting um, private industries. 
private industries, I mean, along the food value chain. Uh, governments cannot do but everything. It, it, but haven't you been talking about whether or not agriculture is a good business? It's, it's an indispensable business, but he just told us about a person with 100 hectares who, who has been sacked from his farm. I think it boils down to insecurity. <laughs> which, is, which is, I mean, I, for me personally, I just yes. want to stay focused on the topic for today because if we want to look at the factors, there could be so many. Yes, well, sir. could be one of them. Bad risk could be one of them. Miscreants on the road and the extra lo lo internal, internal customs, let me put it that way, who yes. collecting, you know, uh, and all that. You know, all of that. Elder David. Uh, uh, sorry, sir. No, it's uh, fine. Elder David, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Are you all right? Thank you for calling in, sir. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Elder. Hello, sir. We can hear you, Elder David. Carry on, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Yori. God, God, will, God will bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Happy New Week. Compliments of the season. Indeed. Compliments of the New Year so to I'll you, Elder David. Back. I'm very happy. Thank you. Uh, yes. To the security, a nation is switch when, when the citizens have food to eat, which is number one. They will not talk of security of life, yeah, which is correct. And we thank God this government has come in peace. The only thing I'm always saying on this platform, when I see patients, when people are patient with this government, all these problems will be solved. It's only, it, it is just because some people are very diabolical. What some people do is to discredit the government. What are they gaining? When we are talking of refinery, South Africa doesn't have oil. Mm -hmm. It's one of the richest in the, in the whole world because of good leadership. South Africa has no oil. And this government has done so many things. This field, which he has set up, he has appointed a minister for it. He is going to run Nigeria more, even than the crude oil we are talking about. The increase of, of, uh, of, of petroleum, he has have, have actually bring hardship for every one of us, nobody that is not suffering it. Mm -hmm. And he has bring people to a very good, advantage, a very, very good advantage, very good advantage for Nigerians. There are many things Nigeria are enjoying today we could have not have enjoyed. And if I may ask her, is it only the federal government alone? What of state government? What is their own job they are doing? Yes. What of local government? Revenue and location is changed to three tiers of government. Why are we looking only, only the federal, 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 federal? Okay. There are some states that have never I mean, implemented only one project. For eight years, they are going out. I will not like to tell you that so you know them. They are going out this year, and God will vote them out. Oh, oh, all right, no, Elder David. Has, Thank you well, very much for calling in. You. Uh, thank you very much, Elder. Well, Elder David is saying there that um, <laughs> if you look hard enough, you can actually find a silver lining, yeah. uh, that there are actually some, more, some other things. Even as we are complaining about these, there are some other things we are benefiting. So let's not dwell too, too long on the negatives. Indeed, thank you for your counsel, Elder David. But we are just saying that sometimes it's difficult um, to, 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 to see uh, and, and indeed practice the patience that Elder David is talking about when you suddenly get a stomach cramp as a result of uh, hunger. 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 And um, the, we've been talking about the indispensable occupation of agriculture, farming, and how all of that you know, is in the doldrums right now. It doesn't matter what aspect of agriculture you look at. Is it fisheries? Is it uh, poultry? poultry you know, uh, cattle, herding? Uh, it, nothing. Everything. It's the soaring prices, and it's been going like that for upwards of maybe a year now, you know. And um, the, the, the problem is we have to come out of it. I, I you know, I, I pointed out that these ideas, you've been talking about them ad infinitum, uh, right through the Buhari administration, right into this one. And I guess these ones had better, you know, get a move on if they just have to become more creative if people are going to understand and practice the patience that Elder David was talking about. They want some soccer. And um, I'm, I'm actually enamored of uh, the idea that came in from George when he called in, that look, find another way. Find another way to affect what is going on. And he suggested that, look, for whatever it is worth, if you do the, you know, the adjustments that he suggested such that 
Dangote and all refineries are getting a concession price, uh, then they might be able to pass that on and all the rest that follows. Of course, experts will also have commentary on that. Um, I am hearing that someone else wants to join us. Hello? Uh, hello. Is that Mr. Adebo Ali? Hello? Yes, please. Yes, good yes. morning to you, sir. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Um, my take on it is that uh, I've listened to what you have been discussing. First, on security. I think what we should do, I want to make some suggestions. Yes. One is that we've always said that we don't have enough security people. We have too many. We have people with no safety and things like that. There are so many of them. All of them bear arms. They all sit down somewhere. But why can't we now get everybody together? Now, for two months at least, now let them go and completely arrange themselves properly. Let them bombard all those forests and all that in terms of security and then see how to drive away the people. Then concerning the food aspect, I think the suggestions have been made, which I think is, is good. First, the problem is the, the problem is the cost of transportation. Why can't we, like they did during this, uh, during the uh, last, uh, in the, in the holidays, now why can't we arrange through transportation that the government will pay? No, don't give, don't give the government. Why can't we arrange seven, seven, four local governments? By the time you do that, arrange a cooperative with the, with the 77 of Nova governments. Let them, let them uh, talk about how much the prices of the goods are. And then give them the cost of that transportation. You're not going to get to spend 20 uh, million out of 20 billion. Now, but what we tend to waste too much money. Uh, the problem is that like these, these people, which we talk about bad roads, but they still bring their goods out. Why not arrange transportation for them? Pay those transportation. The government, if the federal government can do that, well, the 774 local government, just informing uh, the state government, I, I believe that that will assist them so much to bring out their goods. The people still take these goods. And if you are in cooperatives, make them turn them into cooperatives. Okay. Make sure that these cooperatives are the ones that will arrange the prices, they are not also the ones that you are going to give the money to, to bring out the goods. All right, then. I, I, I beg your pardon. I've got to interrupt now, but I want to thank you very much, Mr. Debo Ali, for making those suggestions and putting them next to other suggestions that have been made in this program. And Mr. Debo Ali we returned to the idea of uh, a concerted action against this insecurity. Uh, the, you might have seen on social media in the past week or so where some experts, uh, mainly retired military uh, generals, uh, have been saying that, let the commander-in-chief, let him put a definitive order on ground. Let him put a definitive order on ground and then come and see whether we don't have the boys and the, the women in uniform to indeed, you know, execute his order. Uh, but they're suggesting, as I say, conspiracy theories, that it is not so for a reason. We're going to have to leave it here, uh, gentlemen, wow. you know, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, uh, and there's so very much, as Victor was saying, there's so very much more that needs to be said. But let me just thank you very much, Solomon. Uh, Mr. Oyeni, our CFO, Australia Foods, Agro Foods, our processing expert. And uh, Dr. Victor Ohai, he's a politician, actually, but uh, at the moment he's uh, an African affairs analyst. He's a man of many caps. Thank you very much, Dr. Ohai coming on the program as Thank well. Thank you for having me. So that's our program. Do please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now. Get stepping, because if you upgrade your DST